powerful, technical, and skillful. These are the qualities that define Roger Milla, a true force of character. It is by drawing on his mental strength that he was able to win the titles he dreamed of. Roger Milla, with tout ce qu'il a à le meilleur attaquant de l'histoire du football africain aujourd'hui. As the oldest striker in World Cup history, the former striker has undeniably left his mark on modern football. Albert Roger Milla was born on May 20, 1952, in Yaoundé, Cameroon. During his childhood, the young Roger moved around a lot because of his father's work. It was finally in Douala that the 11-year-old discovered his passion for football. In 1965, he signed his first football license with one of the city's clubs. Positioned at the top of the attack, his technique and finishing already impressed observers looking for new talent. So much so that a few years later, the teenager was transferred to the Leopards of Douala. He then took his first steps in the league. Two years later, the 18-year-old won his first title as Cameroonian champion. He repeated the feat the following year and took his team to the semifinals of the African Champions Cup. His performances were quickly noticed and the man who was compared to Pele in his homeland was bought by the most famous club in the country, Tonnerre de Yaoundé. There, the young prodigy quickly fit in with his new team. Better still, in 1975, he had an exceptional season and won the honorary title of African Ballon d'Or. Eager for a challenge, Roger Milla decided to move to France. But his arrival was not as pleasant as he had hoped. Transferred to Valenciennes, partly thanks to donations from numerous supporters, it was impossible for him to play in the first division. Before the notorious Bosman ruling, European clubs were not allowed to field more than three foreign players in their squad. The transfer of Polish striker Zygmunt Marsik failed at the last minute. As a result, Roger Milla found himself having to play with the youngsters of the Division d'Honneur, the sixth French division. Despite this disappointment, the Cameroonian did not let it stop him and showed his class in every match. Although he remains professional, his adaptation to a new country is no less difficult. Lacking rhythm after six months with the amateurs, the Yaoundé native had a roller coaster season scoring only six goals in 27 games. Transferred to Monaco, the striker does not shine and seems far from exploiting his full potential. In 1980, he headed for Corsica and Bastia. His stay on the Isle of Beauty is noticed without being remarkable. And although he added a French cup to his list of achievements, it was at another club that Roger Milla finally revealed himself to the French. In Saint-Étienne, more precisely, it was during the 1984-85 season. Called to the rescue in a club that had just been relegated, the Cameroonian finally became an effective striker. His performances enabled the club to be crowned champions of the second division and to return to the elite. Two years later, Milla repeated the feat, this time with Montpellier. Loved by all, Milla is finally blossoming in France. Soon to be in his 40s, the old lion went into early retirement on the Reunion Island before returning to his favorite club, Tonnerre Yaoundé. There, a historical crowd awaits him. It must be said that although Roger Milla did not do extremely well at club level, it was a different matter at national level. First called up in 1973, he scored his first international goal at the age of 26. With the meter finally unblocked, the striker gradually took on more responsibility. In 1982, he participated in Cameroon's first qualification for the Spanish World Cup. During this competition, he and his teammates failed to reach the group stage, although they remained unbeaten. The Indomitable Lions confirmed their potential two years later by winning their first African Cup of Nations. Roger Milla lined up at the top of the attack, scored only one goal during the competition. Appreciated for his many qualities, everyone knows that Milla could excel even more. It did not matter. After 15 years of loyal service, he organized his jubilee in Cameroon in January 1988 to end his international career. In front of more than 100,000 spectators, he decided to hang up his boots. But as his club career shows, Milla never expired. He proved it the following year when he was selected for the 1988 AFCON. Stronger than ever, the then 36-year-old finished top scorer and best player of the competition. Above all, he enabled Cameroon to lift their second continental trophy. 
Since this historic victory, the old lion hung up his boots. But as the World Cup drew near, Cameroonians were clamoring for the return of their star player. As a new generation emerged, Roger Milla felt that he still had a role to play in the national team. The coach, however, was less convinced. It was then the president himself, Paul Bia, who picked up the phone to bring back the country's heartthrob. Roger Milla was thus selected, but his place at kickoff was on the bench. A luxury joker that his coach finally enjoyed using after the hour mark. As a result, he scored four goals during the competition, including a historic double against Colombia in the last 16. Cameroon reached the quarterfinals thanks to his talents, but were knocked out by Lineker's England. They nevertheless achieved their best World Cup performance. Roger Milan n'était pas titulaire. Il a marqué deux, quatre buts pendant cette Coupe du Monde là. Deux buts contre la Colombie qui qualifie le Cameroun pour les quarts de finale. Deux buts contre la Roumanie. De Georges a dit, euh, il a fait deux passes décisives hein, en quart de finale contre euh, l'Angleterre. Il était le, il est devenu le roi de l'Afrique, le roi du football euh, africain. The frantic dances of the 1990 African Ballon d'Or winner will remain etched in the memories of this World Cup. The story is beautiful, but it does not end there. Four years later, the unthinkable happened. As the U.S. World Cup approached, coach Henri Michel asked him to return to the national team. Mila was 42 years old and played as an amateur for an Indonesian club, but he wasn't one to shy away from anything, and so he accompanied his teammates to the United States. Despite their crushing defeat by Russia in the first round, Roger Mila scored the only goal of the match. It was a record-breaking goal, as he is now the oldest scorer in the history of the World Cup. An unparalleled finisher and a man who was at ease with the ball at his feet, the 1.76 meter tall man was a passionate footballer, a footballer who marked an entire generation. Roger Mila fait partie de cette race là, des joueurs extraordinaires que même si quand ils sont sur le terrain, leur nom seulement sur une feuille peut changer le cours d'un match parce que ça rebooste le coéquipier. He will have played 709 games and scored 451 goals at club level. His eventful career has made him a football legend. By the way, who do you think could break his World Cup longevity record? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like, share, and subscribe. See you soon for a new video. Ciao!